I'm here with Eric and Todd from Organics Alive. We're sort of social distancing, but we're going to build some <laughs> soil uh, from scratch for Tom, who's off camera, but we'll see him in a second. For his backyard six plant grow, we got. Let me just quickly get the plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your battery's yellow. Okay, baby girl. <laughs> so we got a whole bunch of babies ready to go into a grass roots fabric pot raised bed. Okay, baby girl. <laughs> Here, all right, so hold on one second. Uh, can, you, can you play with the rolly pulleys for a little bit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, I just keep her over there. Um, so I guess I'm gonna let you guys, Gemma! Can you be quiet for one second? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna let you guys take it away, but basically the, I the, the idea is, uh, you know, for home growers in their backyard, how do you build the soil up? So I'll let you guys take it away. Yeah. Well, for, you know, I'd say for kind of like the beginning stage, get things going, we like to keep it as simple as possible. And as you begin to, you know, get involved with your plant, get involved with your soil, start to understand a little bit about soil biology, uh, you know, compost, the soil food web, um, we're going to show you a real easy way to make a very, very simple and successful soil and then, uh, and then start to explore into how you're making your own soil and taking different components and adding them at different ratios. And as soon as you start getting the, getting the hang of things, getting the flow of things, it just gets funner and funner. Try to put that together. So, so, so one of the interesting things is you guys literally went to the, st what, what store did you go to? We went down in uh, near San Clemente. We'll give them a, we'll give them a, what, what, do, you, what do you call that? Uh, like a hydro it, store? It, yeah, it's a, hi you know, it's a hydro store. We'll give them a shout out. It's, it's Beach Cities down in Camino Capistrano and uh, just a normal hydro store. And honestly, we got the, the most, I think the most, one of the most popular soils, which is just Fox Farm. You know, they're everywhere. Uh, it's a great, it's a great soil, but there's some things we're gonna add to it. So this way, because we like a different type of consistency, we like to add some elements. One of the elements we're gonna add here is our premium mix. Our premium mix from Organics Alive uh, is uh, worm castings, some really nice vegetable compost and a little bit of mineral to add in there. And the vegetable compost is 30 to one carbon nitrogen. So we're gonna get into that in a little bit, but ki carbon nitrogen is a really great uh, element to kind of look at in regards to how your, your, your biology is gonna grow, especially the balance of your biology. So we're gonna add that to just the simple potting soil. And then we're gonna add a little bit of, uh, of, of the uh, uh, berger there. Uh, that's just a peat. A normal uh, peat product we find that's good quality and good consistency as well. But one of the interesting things was when you went to the hydro store, they mm -hmm. were out of like everything, right? Yeah, you right. know, they were. We had we were looking for a roots roots potting soil, uh, and they 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 were uh, they were uh, back order on that, and then a couple other 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 companies too. It seems like this year there's quite quite <laughs> some action. In both the compost area and the soil area, so. And that's not normal, like. No, it's, you know, it's, not. I've never, honestly, I've never ever seen uh, that kind of, uh, you know, like a like a back order on soil like that. So, but that's great. That's great news. It means everybody's gardening. That's what we need. We need more gardening. So, how do you guys determine how much uh, you need to mix for whatever purpose you're using it for? Yeah, we did the simple math on the container. It's a four by four by 16 inch bed. And so that's about 20 cubic feet roughly. And then it'll come back down a little bit with water as well. So doing the math on how many cubic feet of soil to amendment, we, uh, we like to add our castings at a 10 to up 15% ratio. Um, so we're starting with, you know, like you said, good base organic blend this one's already pre-amended with a lot of additives like shrimp and crab meal and different oceanic um, food sources for the biology that we have within our castings um, one of the things i really like in here is the shrimp and the crab meal it contains um, chitin 
And the way we feed our worms, we get chitin and cellulose degraders, and these are certain microorganisms that will help to digest and create enzymes that, help, that will increase the sugars of the plants and different um, responses for, for overall strength and health and immunity for the whole system. So it's good, good base potting soil to start with. And then, uh, like we were saying, our castings are a little bit dense, so in the mix, we like to add a little bit of something with a higher porosity. So we went with the Berger, through adding a little bale of this in there. It has extra perlite and peat, not as much compost to retain the moisture. And give it a little fluff as it comes out of the bale. So the, the environment we're creating now, is this, uh, is this good for any type of plants or uh, specific types of plants or can you grow anything here? It's a really good base mix, to be honest, for any raised bed. Um, it's definitely your higher end because we're, we're buying the best inputs possible. Uh, we're going to get the best outcome in the end from that, you know. And so the idea is over, like, you, you'd start with kind of a, a mix that's not jam-packed with nutrients, and then over time, because, I mean, these are babies right now, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so being babies, we want to make sure that the soil is not going to be hot as well. So if you mix a soil on your own and you're adding too many different meals and and inputs, you could create a hot environment, which is like an excess of nitrogens and, and, and phosphoruses that can potentially burn your roots to your plant and uh, damage a seedling as it goes in. One of our ways to help mitigate that is through our biology. Once we water and we get the worm castings and our microorganisms kicking in there, they're gonna start consuming all those excess nitrates and nitrites that could potentially burn your plant when it goes in there. And then also by using our microbial rich solution right away by doing the, by brewing up that, that's gonna be your other great um, benef benefit to mitigate any, any potential burn or hotness in your soil mix. And that could potentially come from the soil yard, you not even knowing and them not intending by not to fully composting their compost or there's many issues that can occur to cause that. Yeah, you can already see, you know, the difference in the richness and the color. This really just helps cut that down a little bit. And yeah. Helps fluff up the soil so you have better water, the water drainage and water retention at the same time. Gives it that real nice balance. Now you said your castings were, what was the word you used? Thick or they were heavy or what did you say? Castings in general are a little bit dense. Dense. Yeah, are yeah. a little bit dense. Um, so really in soil blends, you know, 10 to 20 percent is really the uh, threshold, minimum 5 percent. Uh, but depending on how you like the consistency and how you want to wa water and where your location is, I'd say the maximum would be 20, 20 percent. So what is that, 20 percent density? Yeah, of the, of the entire blend. Oh, okay, So gotcha. if you have, you know, f five or four bags or five bags, one of those bags would essentially be... Uh, a, a premium mix of castings. And so with the math being about 20 cubic feet within the container, we'll add one, one or add a little bit of our castings that'll get us to that 10%. So at this point in your guys' experience, do you, do you put this together just kind of by feel? Yeah, definitely by experience. You know, we've used a lot of the soils on, on the market and then have experienced different densities throughout our time growing. So we found that you know, having this type of consistency is the best for plants because it really gives them an opportunity to breathe. And that's what's happening with your soil as they're, as they're breathing, they're drying, they, they, they're watering. So it's, it's, it's almost you want to have that two day, three day watering period um, to really make sure your plants are uh, extending roots and growing real healthy. All right, now for the fun part. Yep. And so what we're going to add now, and this is kind of the secret sauce of any good soil, blend would be your, your premium mix, organic live premium mix, or a very good worm casting slash vegetable compost. 
Um, it's always going to be a, a great addition. And uh, a lot of the biology is going to come from the, the worm castings. Um, so you want to make sure you, you have enough, enough diversity, a good balance of biology to come from those worm castings. So like the bag you have right now, are the mm -hmm. castings just evenly distributed throughout the bag? Yeah, exactly. So this is actually a specific ratio. We have 47% worm castings uh, or 52% worm castings, 47% compost, and the rest being uh, mineral. And we put fossilized kelp in there, which is, uh, which is great for a calcium, calcium magnesium source. And then also the uh, biology will use them as attachment sites to grow. And that's your that's your product, right? Yep. So yep. you you created those that mix and you d d d designed exactly, that? Exactly, yep. Okay. Developed that, yep. Okay. This premium mix we designed in 2002 uh, to complement just the pure castings by adding the compost. The compost really adds uh, more moisture holding uh, capacity as well as a uh, carbon and nitrogen food source for the microorganisms in the castings. Well, and what made you guys decide to start your own nutrient company? Um, you know, there wasn't really that much organics on the shelves back in uh, the, the late 90s and early 2000s. You know, there was a lot of, there was a couple companies out there, but it was mostly casting. Yeah. Um, it was mostly a, a lot of synthetics and, uh, you know, indoor hydroponics and things like that. So, we started to play around with our own nutrient or our own soil blends. When we started to dig into soils a little bit, we understand it, that kind of led us to understanding the soil food web. And the soil food web led us to understand how we can retain the, obtain the best biology. And then that took us into vermiculture. And from there, we started to put together different feeds for worms, which then, uh, you know, inspires the, the, the red wiggler to put out a casting that's high quality so so you grow you guys growers as well you, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah and that's kind of how this all started just just being growers um, and then from there uh, we you know biology took us into fermentations and then that's kind of where the whole line began to take take hold so it's been a really fun journey <laughs> So are we creating a living soil environment? You know, we are. This is kind of the beginning phases of a living soil, especially adding this, uh, especially adding this, this type of biology and having the, the, the carbon nitrogen that we're adding via the compost. And then from here, you know, you'll, you'll probably have great guests that can talk about to uh, cover crops and the diversity of cover crops. Uh, when, when one cycle is done, what are the best ways to add nutrients back into your soil via cover crop? So our goal is to take this one base, it's super simple to put together, add the proper biology via worm castings, and then from there, you'll begin to say, okay, I wanna keep the soil in here, because it's, you know, you don't wanna keep taking it out, or it's, it's a waste, it's unsustainable, and it gets expensive, and how to just kinda of keep soil alive in a bed like this, and it's really easy, actually, in a bed like this, a four by four from grassroots is, is uh, it's, it's perfect for a living bed. That's what we use actually for our gardens. Do most people assume that you need to create a living soil environment in the ground? Like I might have assumed that. Um, yeah, what we're doing is we're putting the right food sources yeah. to sustain that microbial yeah. process. And then the right microbes so that they're in a balance as well. And so we've done is we've added the premium mix. You can see that. And then added a, uh, the worm castings as well. So we've done both additions here. Just the classic soil in the hand. <laughs> Are you appreciating no shovel or no rake? <laughs> I, you know, this was an old school method and we're going to continue with it, yeah. I guess. So your worm casting soil is much darker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yep. Pure worm castings. Mm. There is no compost in that one. Yep. And the pure castings oh. is. Oh. That's pure casting. Yep. Pure. That's the pure worm castings. Which they are certified organic, um, California Department of Food and Ag, uh, CCOF, as well. So you're inputting in certified organic inputs. The way we feed the worms, we also exclude manures and biosolids and other possible contaminants so we get the most pure uh, end product from that 
uh, digestion process of the worm. And we use the red wigglers as well for the castings. And yes, appreciating no shovel very much. And so a lot of people talk about, you know, like bone meal, kelp meal, blood meal, uh, mycorrhizal fungi. Like what, what do you, in the early stages, can you talk about kind of like some of the things that people think they always need to add that you either do or don't add and why? Yeah, um, you know, a lot of the base soil, if you look on the ingredients, kind of have a lot of those, or if you look on the back of the soil, they've added a lot of those ingredients for you. And they're pretty experienced in how they put it together. Um, so it's a good ratio. You don't want to put too much, too many meals uh, or different blends because it can really get hot. Um, but those are good additions um, to add as you want to add food sources along the way. And that's just different stages for the plant's life as well because you don't want to use a high nitrogen possible um, source right as you go into flower. You'd rather use, you know, a nice potassium or phosphorus source of an amendment. So how is this blend looking now? It's looking great. And you it, can yeah, see consistent. like it kind of lightened up a little bit. And, and, and what do you want to look for? Is it, a, is it a, like a shade, a color, or, or when you know you're, you've reached your, uh, the consistency that you're looking for? For me, it'd be water drainage. When you get to the right water holding capacity. Oh, okay. For, for your desire for how quickly it's And gonna... is that something you can feel in your hands? What we could do is we could take a smaller container, excuse me, and we can simply fill this up and run a quick drainage test on it. Gotcha. And if we put the water through it and we find it just sits on top and it's not penetrating, we're gonna wanna add some more of our high porosity, perlite, cocoa, something like that, uh, vermiculite, pumice, lava rock, something to fluff it up. Um, that means you probably put too much of our castings or the original soil blend itself was rather dense. So um, that's kind of our key is... Should uh, we bring some water over here to do it or do it right here? Absolutely, right on the grass. Okay. Right here would be perfect. That's some water. Well, we got the hose over here, right? We got the hose or I can actually... Why don't I just pull the hose okay. over? Yeah, you know, these rows, if you, uh, if you put them together, they're about 15 miles and long and, 15, and eight feet wide. And uh, yeah, so and they're, and they're outside. And, they're, and this is down in, uh, in what, where? Yeah, this is near Central California. Oh, yeah, coast. yeah, okay. coast a little bit, yep. So are there particular types of worms that provide better castings? Yeah, we find that the red wiggler is a, is a great worm because of its, uh, its ability to compost and the speed at which it composts. It also, uh, it, 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 its food source is the biology that's doing the composting. Ah, so and where do you find them? Uh, red wigglers, you can, you can uh, they're, they're available, you know. Shops. Yeah, they're, shops. they're available. Like, wh yeah, like, where are they found? You know, like, they're all they... online. Online, you can find them. They'll send you a couple pounds easily. I'm sure if we took a scoop of your soil right really? here, you might have some. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Underneath the grass, okay, right in the root zone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, I mean, what, what do you, you said chitin. So is that something you're, you're like, what are you putting into the worm? A high chitin diet. So anything like a, a frass that they can consume, you know, so you, what will what, happen is you have frass. A, a type of frass or a shell or a chitin shell uh, that you'll that you'll uh, pulverize, and what'll happen is that'll attract actual chitin degraders, and then the red wigglers will consume those, and then encapsulate it in their casting, and then that now that chitin degrader that's part of the recycling uh, part of biology uh, is now encapsulated in that worm casting. When you put it in the soil and water it, it basically based on our recipe it'll come out of that worm casting and start to eat some of the chitin elements that are in here 
So some of the shell, that, and that's kind of like why we like more seafood, or I should say uh, from the sea food sources, uh, like uh, the shell and the crab that Eric was talking about. Because what that does is that, that gives the ability for food for those chitin degraders, and they'll start to multiply. And chitin degraders and cellulose degraders, they release cellulase and, and chitinase, and those actually help with the immunity of the plant. And uh, they search after uh, pathogens. So it's, uh, it's chitin cellulose degraders are a really important uh, part of the, uh, the biological food web. Looks good. That's great. So should we test the... We are ready it? for a drainage test. Okay. So we'll go ahead and let it fall in. And you can see it really just absorbing the soil right away. It's not getting pooling on top too much and we're doing a pretty quick watering and gone. So we went right down? Correct. Oh, great. Yeah. So very nice consistency. Now, now um, could it drain too quickly? Potentially, yes. Yeah. So once you pick it up, you can actually see how much water holding capacity it has by squeezing it and wringing okay. it out. And what are you looking for? Well, nice medium, you know. Um, you wouldn't want this to clump together and to stay together, say when you bounce it like that. Okay. That would mean that you had too much compost or maybe some soil and it wouldn't, wouldn't but stay. But breaking up like that is what you want to see? Correct, yeah. So when you clump it together, if it was too much compost, it would probably more stick together and wouldn't just fall apart nicely in your hand. And it wouldn't quite still be able to mix. So it's like basically well. it's got to be breathable? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it would become very cakey. You yeah. wouldn't be able to separate it in the back end of the fines. Like, the, the, it is like, how cakey is there? Oh, this is not even cakey at all. No, it's not too yeah, bad. Yeah. yeah, and so we can add more water to it and... You want some more? Oh, that's okay. I think we have a good reading on it. Okay. It looks nice to me for the, uh, for the bed. What do you think? That's looking, it's looking great, yeah. So our ratio was about seven cubic, seven and a half cubic feet of our high porosity mix. Uh, 10 cubic feet of the um, of the amended uh, potting soil blend and then two cubic feet of our castings so far um, so you got about 20 percent of the uh, the organics live castings in there which is a great great ratio especially sure. out here it gets hot too yeah you know, you're up in the hundreds in the yeah so having so it retain you want so you want to retain a little bit more moisture okay. just to keep them happy mm -hmm. uh, on those hot hot days and so you don't have to continuously water mm -hmm. yeah that'll save a lot of water and the plant will just kind of stay cool over overall mm -hmm. and also container size if if we were planting directly into this container and i knew that before i was going to be filling you know my six plants but using this <laughs> container she knows what's good oh that is so funny she sure does i would probably make a more porous uh mixture uh if Say it was going i'm sorry oh no if it was for a small container i would make it slightly more porous um than if it's for the larger bed because we want to sustain a little longer watering we don't want it to dry out on the outside real quickly before the middle does um, but where this we would if we would afford more of that breathability within the soil blend. So it's all, for me, it's always custom per where I'm going with it Does as well. Does that modification follow the larger you get? Like even if you had a larger bed, you'd want um, some more moisture in there, like even like a double that. Correct. I mean, yeah, because yeah, okay. if you think about the soil ground itself, that's very retent, has very high water retention. You only need to water every few days if you have a good, you know, where we're trying to water every day in these containers to have it breathe properly and the four by four maybe we're back to that every other day okay. watering even further out than that and when the beginning at the end when the plants are really drinking we'll end up watering more frequently but right now it's going to hold nice moisture and then also the way we water the bed is very important because we don't want to just continue soaking especially a seedling when we transplant it so we can go into some of those techniques okay. later but okay. yeah it's all about because too much water can also be is there do you guys have experience with auto flower, auto flowering plants Autos? we have experience with people with experience okay. <laughs> we have some of those so yeah if there's a difference uh -huh. all right so do we want to move that now and, and uh, let's uh, put it put in its home. Soil in 
or what are we going to have? What's the process? I'd say we can drag it to where it's going to go, and okay. we could probably take the whole tarp by corners, and everybody and just drag, drag this thing oh, yeah. over to Let's it, and it. then hump it in and yep. move forward. We could possibly try to pick it up and. That's right. Yeah, we can set it in there and pour, pull, try to pull tarp. Yeah, or like a do like a put it in there and slowly pour, slow it, pour yeah. lift it up so it slowly funnels in. Yeah. Two people grab this side, two people yeah. from the back, and it yeah. will be good. Cascade in, <laughs> and then we we'll use better than the, handfuls in there. <laughs> then we we'll use the bloom as like a topper when we yeah. transplant. So what's that? This is our granular. I was just gonna put a little bit in here so we don't have to go through opening it. Have and it what, what's in it? Um, it's basically our dry soluble fertilizer just prilled with a, with a ben, um, bentonite clay. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, uh, like a slow release form of our fertilizers. We just do a little, uh, a little dab down in the root zone. That's no, this is actually our granular fertilizer. Uh -uh. So I was just putting a little bit in a bowl. So when we give it the, uh, give it our, our, our treatment, it doesn't have to. And, and this is it. organic too, because it looks like uh, like Miracle Grow style. It is. It is organic. Um, we don't use any polymers or binders of, of any sort within within the material, and it's the same derivative as our dry soluble. So it's derived from the microbial fermentation byproduct, which is basically a bacterial a bacteria process, and then we have it prilled. So it is a slow release formula. And here we have different granular sizes as well. The small ones will obviously break up a little bit faster while the larger ones will take a little longer to digest. So this gives you a nice, you know, three to four week slow release um, of, our of our nitrogen granular formula, the 5T2. And, and, uh... so, so that's a sl basically a slow re release nitrogen dominant Correct. And then as once your plant moves into flower, we're going to leave behind our, our granular uh, PK as well. So all it takes is just a little about a gram, a couple grams per plant around the base and continue watering and it'll give you a continuous slow release uh, gran uh, PK. And then we also have in the granular form our K formula, the 025. This is good to finish with so you can right at flower Hit it with the granular, and then for your final two to three weeks of finish, get the K, get a little bit of K on there for a boost. It'll really help harden harden up those those flowers and push the push your bulk and your density and your weight in the and end. As far as your amount, are you uh, kind of eyeballing it for this much soil? Yeah, really, uh, about a gram per plant on transplant is about all you really need. Not too much. It's very efficient um, because our fertilizer. It has no salt. It's actually a carbon um, chain that the nutrients are are suspended on, and so it does not get become leached out of the soil or have to go through any other chelation process. It's already available for the nutrient, and the carbon helps it to suspend and stay in the soil and not become just part of the grass fertilizer for you. All right, so now we'll bring over the soil and bring it in. <laughs> Mush. We're there. Wanna I pull I pull it right up over? Yeah. Uh, me, and then we'll push this over here. Uh, Something tells me that it's gonna be fastest to go like this. Yeah. Yep. Uh, oh. Let's see what else? It's the MacGyver style. The yeah. no shovel methods. All the stuff's at the farm. When you show up to a grow without a shovel. The cardboard is recyclable. We could actually put a layer of cardboard down at the bottom, help any grass pressure from coming in, but that's okay. Next year. Next season. Always improvements.
<laughs> Woo. Now we just slip her out. Slip the, just get the. All right, beautiful. Wow. Perfect wow. calculation by Eric. That's there, good job. Amazing. There you go. Wow. Do you think you guys have done this before? <laughs> <laughs> A beautiful bed. Man, and now, is, is this what, is this like, because the water's going to go in, will it sink down a little? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and definitely. So, and this is, so this is just what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the good thing about what Grassroots has done is that you can see the stitch there we were looking at before was, uh, They've added this so you can uh, you can be more consistent, but you, but you don't get soggy down here. So they really thought that through. Right. <clears throat> Tom, are you excited? So excited. Look at this view. It's like a view. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's a beautiful bed, Tom. Wow. Yeah, that's going to grow so Really healthy plants for you. And give it a little press down. Compaction, not too much, not too little. Well, give him one more week and Eric and I will be making 64 of these. <laughs> uh, so what's your Thank you, you Grassroots and Build the Soil. Cannabis, both? Oh, uh, we're doing hemp this year. Okay. Yeah, we're doing hemp this year down in San Diego. We, did, we had a test plot last year. Worked with some different genetics and, and uh, found the best that works for our area down in San Diego. So this year we're doing 10 acres. Yeah, CBG, CBD, and uh, yeah, something we're super proud of. And what uh, what genetics did you settle on? Like what, what were some of the kind of uh, breeders whose seeds you were trying out and then? You know, we found uh, just through some of our trials uh, last year. I mean, right this year you definitely have a uh, a, a burst of other seeds that have come out in the market, and we'll certainly test those. But given last year, we we chose to go with HGH, high grade hemp. They've got some great uh, CBG Matterhorn, and then their cherry wine is is great also. You know, we tested at 14.4, so uh, it's it's definitely a uh, and out of a thousand plants, we found not one male. So the feminized process is they've got a they've got a do, they're doing a great job there. So. But we're looking forward to trying all sorts of different seeds in the coming in the, in the coming year because there's a lot of great companies that have been working hard on putting genetics together. So we're we're kind of excited where that's so, going. So I missed that you you guys work with genetics companies. Well, we we have a farm, so we've been doing some seed testing. Sweet. Yeah, we've been doing. You know, we spent the last uh, 18, 19 months uh, so doing seed question. testing. When people bring their seeds to you to test them, see uh, how they're doing in the soil, mm -hmm. is that like a do they go keep it on the down low? Like that's our information. Is is that, is it is that? I would. Yeah. You know, some some you know depending yeah. on how new uh, the seed is that they're bringing to us yeah. or I mean, or special. Is, uh, yeah, you know, definitely one of those areas. Yeah, yeah. it is. Well, we're definitely. we're not allowed to. We don't use them as a breed stock, so we don't seed our you know. So we're not taking other breeder seeds do and creating our own seeds. You do that as stock. to provide a, a service for them, but you're also learning. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We all learn together. Yeah. Yeah. Elevate. So you improve yeah. your product through that process. Yeah, definitely, definitely, because other breeders are always improving. Yeah. That allows the growers to improve. Yeah. And so it really is a it, it really is a friendship that has to take place between growers and breeders. So I guess my question is, as genetics change and our knowledge, and uh, especially in cannabis, will will the soil change with it? I mean, will the environment? I think as of right now, the balance of biology and the soil food web is always going to be the consistent part of anything that's that the process of either genetics or growing or breeding, yeah. and I think that actually. You can using using the soil food web and the balance of biology and high diversity. You can probably uh, enhance and accentuate some of the genetic maximums that plants have. So 
we feel, you know, if you have a well-rounded soil, you can definitely produce a better quality well, seed. Grow growers are always talking about um, realizing the fullest expression exactly. of their genetics. Exactly. And, you know, exactly. so that's what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We've had many compliments that allow our, our products really enhance the, the terpene profile, the flavors, the stickiness, the resin. That's why how but we that's feel. what you're going for. It's exactly. 100%. Yeah. That's, that's exactly. the holy grail. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, the kind that's yeah. going to stick to the window when you throw at it. Yeah. Not the kind yeah. that breaks the window when you throw <laughs> at it, you know? So basically, what do we want to plant? So we got a four by four. You want to do two, three? You know, you honestly, we, if you want to save, what do we have? A, I think we had an odd number. If you want to take f you have four there, sorry, four there. Nine. If nine. Well, we have four autos, so I thought we could put the autos separately just in small pots. Yeah, that, that's um, actually a great idea. Yeah, and you could put four, you can put the rest of them in here, and there's a good possibility one or two might be male, and right. you'll pull those out and remain with like three or four. I hate to be a broken record, but <laughs> Kevin had said with autos that when you do, you transplant them into their final home. So. Right, we're not putting the autos in that. Okay, but if they were, that would be their final home. Yeah, autos like less stress. That's the key to autos, is you really have to go, you have to find a place for the seed and have it settle. And that's really gonna be the best case. But people are getting better at autos, so, uh, you know, we're encouraged. All right, so we basically wanna put four in there right now. What do you guys think? You four is do a healthy number. Four, one five. on each quadrant. No, Assuming I'm that 50% may be male. Okay. Yeah, let's start with four. That way the one in the middle, you know, doesn't get choked out if they all take off. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you got your four. I'm going to leave it up to you guys. You guys are, you guys are responsible them out evenly for those So that each root gets equal opportunity within the... Uh, within the space provided. So we'll section it out into little quadrants. Get our cups going. How does that look? Fairly straight to everyone. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it gives them all an opportunity to, to grow in and grow out. I don't want this to fall over. Find me the one I can. There you go. Oh, like that. Perfect. And we're just going to take a little soil out in preparation for our hole. And these are nice small cups, so we don't need very much. And being that there's not much root mass in there as well, we want to be real careful on the transplant. Right. We don't there's... just drop everything out. So it'll be more of a scoop and hold. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> These are, um, yes we do, these are the Pacific Northwest roots. Uh, Great. So Ras, Kaya, Paul uh, sent a whole lot of these down. Great and, selection. Uh, it's Harlequin <laughs> crossed with uh, <laughs> alien something. Oh. You might have to borrow So my sense is that the back. Harlequins... You might have to come back and take some cuts. Kai, you can you. send me some too if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my sense, the Harlequin's high CBD. Yeah, it's going to be a high CBD. And then the, I would assume the other one is a high THC, so it's kind of like a down the middle. That's perfect. Blend those two together. And yeah, lots yeah. of terpenes, It'll be a nice relaxing lots of evening. flavor. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is to add a little extra love right at the root zone upon transplant. Um, we have one bag left. It's our bloom. Usually I'd be using the premium mix but the bloom is, is great as well to use in any uh, manner. This has a little bit of soft rock phosphate in there. So instead of um, our fossilized kelp and volcanic rock mineral, or sorry, fossilized kelp, we add the um, soft rock phosphate as well as a little more fungal dominant uh, compost. You can see how fine this material is as well. It's very, very good, well broken down compost material screened down to an eighth of an inch and then so really just literally just a dusting is all it really is going to take right at that root zone not much at all what's what's what it will it do you know for me it's a little concentration of biology and and mineral and love right at the transplant zone 
right where the main action is going to be taking place right away for for um, so I, it might be a, as a stimulant to, to stimulate the yeah exactly a little yeah. a little buffer between the roots that are about to grow out and the soil that they're being so placed in yeah well. nice yeah. and what i'm going nice to do as path. well is add just literally like we said that little gram of of our slow release i mean it's literally just a couple couple little granulars that's going to allow the or roots to emerald who does like the bam <laughs> or the, the yeah, or the, yeah. <laughs> and you know you really once again this won't burn the plants because it's not salt based so you don't have to worry about that root coming into contact and it potentially burning because it is carbon based and it's an all organic coloring as well it may look like a chemical though it is not <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was getting at before, because it looks like miracle Grow, but obviously it's... Okay, now we have our nice, and then maybe one little final swirl at the bottom to give it that final little bottom of the hole love. And spread everything up. <laughs> and, um, Maya, you, you know, who is... I'll try one, you try one, you try one. That way if someone fails, it's on <laughs> someone else, or I don't know. <laughs> No, it's sensitive, you know, it's, it's, uh, usually what, what we could do is you could take just some, a, a scissor and yeah, kind of slice down thinking. the cut and kind of open it. And then we can, that's the way we can observe the root and kind of determine how we want to grab something, uh, this size. Sometimes it's nice to go a little bit for uh, bigger on the size, uh, that'll help establish more root mass, kind of, kind of put things together. Um, so definitely, uh, but we'll, you know, we, we can manage. That's what growing is, adapting. Right. Bless you. Should I continue? So basically just kind of making sure I'm squeezing out a little bit, not, not affecting any kind of root that might occur. And you can kind of sell just, 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 as, we, just as we thought. You, you know, so you don't have a giant root zone. Um, so what we're going to do is we're, we know we're not going to affect too much on the bottom there so I would I would probably just give it a little bit of a side slice too and you know the beauty of what Eric just did is in putting castings on the ground is that even if this does have a little bit of shock you know the biology once you water that that biology goes free and it starts attaching to the to the root zone you're really going to find uh, that the plant, even if stressed, would bounce back very quickly. Uh, actually, to maybe not even the trained eye, you probably wouldn't even realize the stress that it would. So I would just, you know, kind of take that. Just make sure we are handling, because what happens is that tap root's going to be at the bottom regardless. So you just want to make sure, yeah, there you go, appreciate that. We want to set it in and, and then kind of recalibrate, hold her up a little bit and we know we got a little sprinkle on the bottom so my hand is still in contact with the, the biology there, uh, making sure that the bottom of this tap root is effectively going to be hitting and then what we'll just do is we'll release and and then this is up to the to grower to kind of manage this process just a little bit is you don't want to bury it so you know, if, if, if you planted a little too deep or a too, little too shallow you, shallow, you still have time to kind of adjust, maybe lean it over, and you don't want to strangle it. And Is when there you, an ideal amount of stalk do you want to see? Yeah, definitely. So you see the color starts to change towards the bottom. It gets lighter? Yeah, so it, it, some strains will be darker, some strains will be lighter, but that's kind of the indication of where it was coming out from the seed. And so you want to be around that zone. You don't want to be too, too far up or too far low, but you can tell if you look real close, you can kind of see some hair development there. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of observe that a little bit and, and just look at, these are babies, so we want to treat them as babies too, you know? So real easy on everything that's, that's done, kind of move things away, give it some breathing room. And this way when you water, things don't rush in and, and, and bury it again. So just like that. And then we'll do is, uh, yeah, there you go, okay. So we, we've added some FPF. FPF is a fulvic acid. Fulvic acid is a great stimulant. Um, 
It def this one has amino acids as well, and it's really good foliar. It's, it's a great soil drench, but fulvic acid, amino acids, simple and complex sugars um, is, is, there you go, is, is, uh, is a great addition. We have a small, literally, it doesn't take much for this fulvic acid to take effect. It's one milliliter per gallon. This being probably less than a pint, um, I'm literally going to, and we don't want to stress that, I'm literally going to take the tip of this wow. thing, get it on there. It's really thick. It's, it's, it has a nice viscosity, consistency, yeah. viscosity, but it's 100% soluble. It will become a full part of the water right away, and so that's really, literally a drop yeah, you, is all I, I want. You didn't shake it. You didn't need, uh, the, 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 you didn't need to shake that, did you? Or? Um, not yet. I'm going to add a little bit of water, and then I'm figuring that that okay. circulation but, is but going to... this formula. That was a little little bit of a shake, but okay. it but it but uh but it doesn't separate. Okay. So it's just a almost out of habit in a sense. But yeah, a nice shake is never hurts. All right. So we have our nutrient filled water, and we're ready yeah. to give it a little. Yeah. Now, once again, you don't want to water right on top of it because you could possibly damage it. So we're just gonna get it right around. But that's a generous amount. I mean, it is. It's in there, like it's brand new in there. It's Definitely. Like no and 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 the thing about the the seed and and cuts is, you don't really need to just take a hose and water this whole thing down. The goal is to, again, let let the roots know that that uh, it has water. Gotcha. You want to activate the biology that's that's a surrounding root, and then you want to water enough where there the water goes just a past the just past the root so that when it begins to dry out the root is going to it's going to signal it to stretch yeah. and try to look for water yeah. and so that's really the the case here so honestly that's how much water you need but again like babies you need to just kind of come out especially in hot weather you come out and just double check on them and maybe in 105 degrees it's a possibility you might have to water twice that day now we're normally not getting up Let's talk temperature for okay. a minute, because re sometimes it gets up triple digits here in the middle of the San Fernando Valley, but you, but like usually it's like 90s, like high 90s. So what's the difference between 103 and 95 or, yeah, like, like when are they really sweating? At, um, at what do you think? You know? They really is genetics on that a lot. You know, you have genetics that are more tailored to hot, drier climates and ones that are more okay. tropical. So I would go into that part to know your, your zone, know so your climate. Will tell. And then we actually have a product that helps you with that. It's our fermented castor bean. And what this actually is, is a foliar spray. It helps by going onto the, the cellu cells on the leaf surface and diffusing the UV as it penetrates the cells. So there's less intercellular heating on the leaf surface, and then that allows the cell to continue growing chlorophyll, stay turgid, not become heat stressed. So this is actually a, a more heat stress, uh, maximized light efficiency uh, And, and when, or what time of day are you spraying that? We'd recommend in the morning, just like with early any, morning. Yeah, just and, with any yeah. good practice. Uh, when they get a little older? Uh, you go yeah. up until flower, up until you see pistil development. Okay. Yeah, once a week, every other week is a good... Is it, is it a mist? You missed? Correct, yep. Nice yeah, mist. get a sprayer. It's and time then, we, will, we will set you up with all the... Yeah. yeah. The, tool, the gardening tools you need. Yeah. Everything so, All right, so, so that's what that does. And then can you talk... So, and, and, but you wouldn't start that now, right? No, correct. You'd start that in like a month yeah, or so. It's, it's, it's grown, and, and for 95 to 100 to 3, you know, it, it just depends because it could be a 95 and very humid. Yeah. You know, it could be 95 and dry. So, you know, that, and then there's, if you add wind, if you take out wind. So there's a lot of elements, but so that's... So that's like right now. So right now, I, you know, you probably would be okay at this point until tomorrow morning. And you would come out and you would look at it, uh, but you stick uh, your finger down yeah. in this zone, see how deep your water is. You say, okay, I have plenty of water. My roots haven't migrated beyond here yet. Perhaps it's looking for water, and you know, wait for this top to dry out a little bit, and then you, then you'll. And do we want to continue feeding it with this mixture? Every yeah, every time you you water. So the first mixture will be FPF. You know, the second mixture you can add a little humic acid. And then the, the third mixture, as they start to, as they start to feed, uh, you can use the dry-soluble high-nitrogen sources. Um, but, you know, generally for 
this type of soil and this type of blend with the worm castings that we added, you really only need uh, plain water. Yeah, it's not going to be yeah, much Yeah, you right know, now. for the, until the, until the uh, plants really start to develop, uh, start eating and needing a little bit more, you can start to get into the regimen. But yeah, because Eric put the granulars in there and a little dust of worm castings, you're going to get everything that plant needs for at least the first week or so. Great. Yeah, and then the only reason you would add a little FPF to the mixture is if your pH may be high on the water you're using, it helps to bring it bring that down a little bit. So just a just a touch, uh, which which generally the uh, the canvas plants like that. So, All right, so should we should we get the other three yeah, in there? Let's get the other three in there. Cut and pour technique. Yeah, I guess that might be the. They're pretty, um, there's not much a, root uh, anyway, so. Let's see if this one got a little more moist. Let's look at it, the gentle touch. And the great thing about this plant is that it, it reacts so quickly and then you can react quick enough and help it. See, there actually is a little taproot already coming down there on the go. bottom of this baby. Wait, hold on, let me... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a so nice, you can actually that's see nice that That's actually fast because yeah. I, I only put those in the dirt uh, seven days ago. Nice. I mean, literally, it, it was a, it had just popped. Jimmy, did you just put glue down my back? It's only 70 degrees now. Can tell it. Yeah, it's a little yeah, it's not too hot, you know? It's only hot because we're doing a little gardening. Yeah, I mean, when this I was growing in Topanga, we'd get in the hundreds, and uh, it was only really, like, in the second, third of growth that they just wanted water. Yeah. Like, now you, you water yeah. them every couple days. Honestly, yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing. You just kind of have to watch the plant and... It really is a process. Uh, you just got to be cognizant of what you're doing and, and take care of the babies until they're... Uh... Did you uh, cut it? I did do the slice, yes, okay. and then just sort of... I think that little bit of moisture... Don't fuck it up, Tom! <laughs> <laughs> I was telling myself that. You want to water the next one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Okay, Gemma, how about right here, but not on the leaves, but around the leaves? Perfect. Nice. Oh, yeah. Good job. Like Perfect. Thanks. This you. This one could probably Good use job. one more little drink, yeah. too. Do it over there, too. Thank you, baby girl. You are the best helper. Well, so cut. much, that was so much, cut. so That's much for you right reusing the solo cups. <laughs> yeah. Solo use solo. Cup. I almost feel like next time I want to let them go longer so that they have like the mass and you can mass. just pop them out. Yeah. But you know that tap root's really gonna like being in here, so it's it's a win-win either way. You gotta wait for them to put the plants in. Yeah. Give it a little roll over and then it yeah. upside down and let it Perfect. fall itself out. Just want to get all of it. There you go. There Perfect. It is. Uh oh. Oh. No, no, Gemma, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> you got a little patience. <laughs> yeah, keep her lifted. I know you're not patient. <laughs> just... Gemma, I like the honesty. That's awesome. yeah. <laughs> okay, around the leaves, not on the leaves, because the. That, uh, enough step. That's you're looking good. No, yeah. That's beautiful. And Gemma, why don't you do uh, it on the right leaves? On the just then it's gonna burn. That's just right. Around yeah, right around. Little circles. Amazing. Okay, okay. perfect. Perfect, sweet. And then let it wait. Okay, you want to do one more? Great consistency on that soil. You want to do it again? Okay. All right, go for it. Peter, you're up. Okay. All right, so we got Your pants our... match the uh, bag of bloom. Yes. And your shirt, too. <laughs> You're the same color as our, ba as our 
the bag of worm cat right next to you. Gemma, how are you with the scissors? Should I trust you yet? Yes. <laughs> That's because I use the scissors to cut. I know. You're a master. Oh, very nice. And that might have been the best one yet. Okay, little buddy, can you can you put Gemma? Can you push? Uh, yeah, you want to push some dirt in? Here, I'll hold this. You know, another note just to add to this oh, too. Right? No, no, not on it. Sometimes yeah, it's around. nice to use a mycorrhizae right in the hole. Well, that's as what well. I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you didn't. And we didn't that. have any today, but there's some great companies that make some really good mycorrhizae, and that's definitely something. That you'd want to look into. And what, 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 is, what is that here? Uh, it's, it's just different uh, different fungies that attach themselves to the roots okay. and start to at this start. Stage. Yeah, even at this stage, it's it's a, okay. it's, it's great. At, you know, so they remember not on the. It'll help to increase the root mass. It'll help bring not nutrients. It'll help fight off disease. Right around. Uh, Mycorrhizae is a great addition to. Uh, yeah, so we'll get that time, and then we'll. Yep. I mean, so now you just what like sprinkle it around. Yeah, here. even now, even. There's soluble point, forms yeah. too. You could yeah. put in the uh, so it penetrates. Mm -hmm. Do we want? It looks like there's a little more moisture. Do we want a little more around? We need it. Okay, well, okay. Fill let's up. put a little, a little more in there. And so, talk about kind of your common uh, LA tap water. <laughs> That's not really a problem. At, I mean, yeah, you know, uh, tap water is is you know it's it varies very much place? from where you are. I mean, there's there's different. There will be different. Uh, mineral content in there. There'll be different ECs in there, uh, so you you uh, you want to be cognizant. If you're if you're gardening at I'll this stage, this well. uh, if you're gardening at this stage, you're there's there's if and you have beneficial biology. There's a good chance that with the addition of humic, with the addition of fulvic, um, you'll be able to minimize some of the chlorines and chloramines that are in the water. Uh, but generally, if you you know, if you can get one of those hose end uh, just attachments with a carbon filter and just remove some of the chlorine, that's going to be really helpful. There's obviously, you know, RO units that, you know, there'll, there'll be wastewater and, you know, it depends on the sophistication of, of, uh, of your grow. Uh, but generally for a garden like this, you know, just a little hose end. Well, even if we just reduce. got a five gallon uh, pail and just let it sit overnight. That would help too. Yeah, that would help too. They have they have thing filters for the hose. Yeah, you know those are really you know you can buy those for anywhere from twelve ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine, and they're right. yeah, like and there's Lowe's yeah, Lowe's place. will have it online. They'll ship you go them. online. Your, yeah. your local hydro store should have a good one. Yeah. Depending on the density of the carbon that they pack, is how many gallons you can fill through value. Okay. Some do like ten thousand, some do thirty thousand gallons, to help strip you know a little bit of that. Just because we want to be sensitive of our biology and those chlorines sure. and chloramines are designed in the water to kill any bacteria. So, of course, when it, you know, goes into the into our soil, there's potential for it to do harm. But we have a practice of continuing to add microorganisms through our uh, bio packs and but by wait, brewing it up. But wait, there's more. <laughs> 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 da, 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 da. That's like an awesome so, segue right there. <laughs> our bio extractor, <laughs> let's get her up here. This guy was made for television. Yeah. <laughs> the bio extractor. Sunday morning infomercial. <laughs> will allow us to brew up our consistent microorganism, our microbial rich solution, so we can continue to apply beneficial biology throughout the growing season. Comes ready to go out of the box. Grab our bio pack. So this is where you would want to use the non-chlorinated water. That's kind of why I brought this up while we were talking about the water issue. When you're brewing biology, Use, use RO water, use well water, use something that's not gonna have any chlorine or chloramine in it because that will inhibit your multiplication that we're trying to gather in here in your biology. Once it's in the bed, you have a lot of food sources and other organic matter and carbon that'll help strip some of that chlorine and, and affect the way when you water consistently. So if you're watering with a hose, city water, it's not a big deal as long as you're brewing up your biology very well. So inside of this pack has all the ingredients, slided, um, Put it inside of the bio extractor, brew it up for 24 hours after you pre-activate it, and you get your 
plethora of 30,000 different microorganisms, your balance of biology, and continue to feed your plants with it throughout the growth what, cycle. What do you mean by after you pre-activate it? So what's the pre-activation process? He's gonna show. Sure, <laughs> I will. We take this, we put in a simple cereal bowl or something like that, and this one takes about a quarter cup of water and pour it over, and what it's going to do is absorb into the, into the mix kit and then that moisture allows some of that slower developing biology to start breaking down the carbs, um, the complex carbs, and it grows more of the fungal and, and our slow eaters. And then we have a packet of basically blackstrap molasses, and this goes in as our sugars, which help feed the bacteria very quickly. So there are 16 different ingredients that go into our mix in here and these are also certified organic california department of food and ag ccof we put no biosolids or animal manures or anything like that in here no chemical fertilizers this is a pure organic pack and then then you allow that solution to brew for 24 hours your multiplication of biology occurs within that time and this is what it's bigger than a five gallon we call this the four gallon. So oh, it's we, a four gallon. Correct. We fill it up to the four gallon line. So once, uh, so it is a five gallon kind of bucket size yeah. filled. So three, we actually have a four fifths the way up. Okay. Let's see here. Take the top off. And so this one packet, basically, once you mix it up, would you would you feed this whole bed uh, over how long a period of time? So you brew it for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Then you have your tea. And then you have your tea. You want to use that tea. The sooner you get it from the extractor into your medium, the better because uh, you've packed so much biology in here and there's an air pump inside of this lid and this is an air diffuser. So when it's on, what you're doing is you're oxygenating the water, creating an aerobic living environment with the beneficial microbes and all the food sources. So they have oxygen to breathe, water to live in and food to eat. They multiply through that process. And then that material gets, you could either dilute it down one to 10, one to 20, or this stuff is so uh, pure. If you've used it fresh, you really, if you don't dilute it, you won't kill your plant either. So, uh, but it has to be fresh if you're doing that. And so, so how long can the tea last before you just kind of need to dump it and rinse it out and you know, temperature, there's a lot of variations in tea brewing that in a lot of really, you know, I'm sure they'll, you'll go over those segments in here. But a general um, practice is, I would say, four hours, six hours, eight hours would be maximum. If you don't want it to be in the sun, keep it in the cool okay, spot. So, so once you brewed it for 24 hours, you basically want to, I mean, we would, and we could, we could use all four gallons in one application in here. I would, I mean, you could potentially, but then you wouldn't be maximizing its, you know, how, what all it could do. So I'd recommend a gallon of solution uh, diluted into a five gallon bucket. Go ahead and water this with one gallon of solution and hit all your other plants around the house with the okay. rest of it. So basically the and grass is going to be And a foliar spray with it as well. Okay. This is uh, fantastic to give everything a foliar spray with. Um, helps protect the leaf surfaces, feed. And that you do what at like 7 a.m. Same thing. Now, yeah, is right. there a, a point in the growth stage when you want to use your tea, or is it using it right away? Um, uh, the sooner we can apply the biology, the better it is for the plants. Okay. Definitely. So we could do it today. Yeah. yeah. Or and by tomorrow. Uh, correct. So we'll we'll okay. go ahead and pre. If you have a cereal bowl and some yeah. non-chlorinated water, yeah. we can pre-activate and begin kicking. Uh, so you will be treating on Thursday. Yeah, because today is Tuesday. Okay. Pre-activating Tuesday, brew Wednesday, treat Thursday. Got it. And so this is enough for one uh, round, and then you guys sell. Do you guys sell like six packs and twelve packs of those? Mm -hmm. Yeah, each exactly. box comes with oh, two. Oh, each box comes. All right. Yeah. Comes with. Sorry, how many? Two. Two in each okay. box. Yeah. Absolutely. Jemmy, you want to hold this, this camera one. for a second? You want to aim it at That's whoever's perfect. kind of talking? Yep. <laughs> okay. So. And this is what they're doing, I guess. <laughs> you want to apply? No, we don't need much yeah. because it's going to absorb yeah. in like a little cake. And what you also, so it'll start off like so, it'll absorb in there. And what I like to do is after a few hours, flip it over because gravity has pulled everything to the bottom. That way you flip it over and let it pull back through gotcha. the middle again. Yeah. Um, and then let it rest because 
if you are manipulating it during this time, you don't allow certain attachments of the biology. It's that sensitive. It, it helps, you know. Yeah. These are just little fine practices that you cool. learn over time. So what's actually going to happen is this loose material will, will begin to solidify, kind of become a one, a more dense cake. And that cakiness is microbial glues beginning to hold together and the organic matter bonding, and that's what we want to see. And so the next, like I we was saying, step would be, so tomorrow, about this time, um, and if you don't get to it tomorrow and you don't brew until Thursday or, you know, two days, that's okay. Because as long as you keep this moist, your biology is starting to activate and go. So we will use our, our molasses. And what I like to do is make a little dent on top, pour the molasses on when it's inside of the, inside of the, the chimney. And this is what, right before you're right ready before to you brew. brew. Oh, okay. yep. So gotcha. this would be oh, right okay. before you brew. Right. You after add, we flipped it and then after we've given it some time. Correct. Okay. We're going to throw it in here. We're going to put a little divot in it like that, squeeze the molasses on top of okay. it, gotcha. and then drop it, into the, drop it into the extractor. And that really just helps us, once again, put that sugar right on top of the donut. Can you just quickly show me where that goes in? Yeah. And then if we could plug it in, you guys, we could show the uh, aeration process. Wrong hand. Okay, so it lays on top, yeah, perfect. Comes right down, and the water level will come to about midway into the basket. Yeah. Because there's, you, another thing is you don't want that bio pack to be overly submerged. You don't want the bio pack to end up down here in the bottom corner because then it's not getting the oxygen. Can you rotate that uh, so I can see the, the markers on the back? There we go. Okay, so you basically want to fill it up to 15 liters. 16 quarts. 16 quarts. Correct. And then, okay. It runs midway to through the chimney. Perfect. And the chimney is designed to uh, hold the bio pack just above the diffuser so the oxygen comes up and continues to cavitate and agitate and knock that biology out of the bio pack. Mm -hmm. And we put it in that little pillow because it helps keep all of your organic matter and sediment in. It allows the biology to escape and it makes it so that this is a clean solution to use in sprayers and emitters and you won't be clogging your lines. Um, so that was one of, one of our... Now, how frequently do you want to make tea? I like once a week. In, in our feeding schedule, we, we recommend once a week. Because and, and and do you have different like maybe more fungal dominant teas for early in the in the yeah, plant's life cycle and yeah. bacterial dominant That's teas right. later in the life cycle? Well, we go for a balance of biology. Okay. Therefore, the plant is able to help indicate and process um, which it which environment it would prefer. So, in other words, your tea recipe doesn't change. Doesn't change okay. from okay. beginning to end. And so, the the what changes is the plants indication to the biology to keep the set that it would prefer during that stage of its growth. And what are some of the all-star bacteria and fungal or organisms uh, that are currently sleeping right now? Oh, the 30,000, mean, there's, <laughs> there's so many. Really? They all, really, I wouldn't say, they're all important. That's the key. I mean, you know, you can buy a bag of bacterial inoculant and read, you know, 1624 bacteria strains that are in it, but really, our, oh, it's underneath our feet. We can't even count right now, you know? So that the importance is more having the diversity and everybody fulfill its role in the, in the, in the, uh, in the environment. And this, this is your guys' product too. So you developed this, was this a trial and error process? Definitely, yeah. We went, we went back and forth with, uh, with labs to develop what ingredients uh, and what elements at what measurements go in with the castings in comparison to the volume of water and the diffusion of air. And so all these variables with many calculations we found, found the magic cake recipe. And this is what develops a, a balance of biology, high diversity and high chitin and cellulose recyclers. Yep. So now we basically absorbed it all, flip it over and it's ready to go for the night. Awesome, should it, is it ideal keep it out or put it in the shade? In the or shade. Co cover it? Um, uh, not necessarily, okay. you know, like once again, the dry Same sun. Sure you want it out. in your growing environment. So you don't want it drying out, that's kind of. all you don't want, great. You wouldn't want to put it in the refrigerator or the freezer. Right. Okay, so it looks like for now we're, uh, so should we be giving this kind of like a all around watering? I would recommend a nice little cake it down. Yeah, with the, if you have a good um, wand that gives it a nice rainwater effect, yeah. 
Like it got rained on more than a uh, jet effect? <laughs> more, more, yeah, more than a uh, fire hydrant. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. And what we'll do one more time is one more little ounce of love, right? Not even on the plant, but once again, right where those roots are gonna be migrating to and looking for that food, because as we water, it's gonna push that right down into this little top zone, right. that top inch layer of root zone is some of the most active and feeding. So it's warm. We would want it to wait till it cools, yeah. definitely. Tom, your home grow. Your you will it's soon gorgeous. have a green thumb. So, so we'll have the training wheels on the whole time. We'll have professionals coming in every week <laughs> to make sure that you don't f it up. Uh, not on the leaves. Not on the leaves. J j uh, j no, no, just <laughs> yeah. There you go. Just <laughs> go go in between. Yeah. Beautiful. This is my favorite part of the afternoon is after it's set, the first watering, getting it all ready. Yeah, Tom, you can you can soak in some of that compost that's in there too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Get that activated a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Perfect. Good technique. So Tom, are you excited to not have to buy mediocre weed at the dispensaries? <laughs> um that is the most exciting. Um thing to look forward to um you know i am it's a compli it, it's complicated i like supporting small businesses and uh, the industry but uh yeah the mediocrity is uh, high taxes yeah the taxes are a big issue it's a huge issue you never know where your dollar is going that you're spending, in essence. Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's really true. And I, I, I remarked upon that in one of our recent things is, uh, you know, as a patient and, and a consumer, you know, 30%, you know, where is it all going? Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah. So basically for like, so we'll whip up a tea that we're going to put on in about two days. And then in terms of, you said, uh, which one should we be putting like a drop or two into the watering can? So the tea by itself is great. You can just add the tea solo when your first, first couple of waterings, uh, try to get the, uh, the food sources unlocked, ready for biology to eat. And then once you start to really, once the plants start to really develop, these first set and start to get real hungry. Then you're going to start the nitrogen process with a couple other additives. So you'll do a VN dry soluble high nitrogen 10 to 2. Uh, and then you'll use a, a fulvic acid and a humic acid. And those three with the tea will be really, really helpful to kind of keep the plants healthy, get them what they need. You know, you have, you're going to have protein development, carbohydrates, uh, and then also a high nitrogen to really keep that plant healthy. You have the premium mix in there already, so you know you're gonna have really good biology all throughout, and then you're adding the, uh, the microbial solution. So do you guys have this written down anywhere? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and then basically, Tom, not on the leaves, yeah, not on the leaves. And, and then basically yeah. stick to that regimen until flowering. Yeah, then... really, it's so simple. You just kind of stick into that regimen. You know, when you start to move into, uh, when you, when the, uh, the sun switches, you start to move into transition, into flower, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a four, five, five in all purpose. So you can add a little bit of this, you can add a little bit of that uh, as you move in. So that's a four, five, five, where it starts to bring in a little phosphorus, a little potassium. And then when the, the flowers completely stop stretching, they start to bulk up, then you wanna move into a zero, 10, eight, where you're completely eliminating the, the nitrogen. But there's gonna be plants that in genetics that definitely still like to have a little bit of nitrogen as they go. So you can take maybe a half a teaspoon of this, add it to a teaspoon of that, 
and so you're going to get you're going to get a little bit of both going into flower. And then once you're familiar with your genetics, you know whether exactly. they're they're the type that like yeah. that or not. Yeah. So you can really play with these boxes uh, based on your genetics, and, and then and then create your own recipe in a sense. Uh, create your own recipe, and the VK is a great flower finisher. So that's going to kind of you know you want to you want to fatten those flowers out. You want to push out some. Uh, some yield, you'll move into a VK. Some genetics don't like phos, phosphorus, and you know sometimes uh, you know a high phos might foxtail the plant. Some people don't like the foxtail, some do. It's just it's just kind of one of those taste things. But you'll uh, this this uh, a high phosphorus, so you you, you pull back and uh, and add just that high potassium, and so that's going to help a lot. Now, I have a question. Are these plants, they're being treated so well and being fed so well, are they going to get um, like massively huge? Do they, are they going to need to be repotted into their well, own plants? We're assuming some of them are male and we're going to have to rip out. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. these, these will get pretty big, but honestly, uh, the time of year plus the size of the seed, they're going to be real, they're going to be nice. And what you can do, Tom, is you can kind of, and maybe you'll have somebody on there that can, that can explain it really well, but you can start to prune and start to really train your plants yeah. to stay. Pull this one over yeah. here, pull this one over and there. Kind of stay a nice, and you have a nice pull edge. Pull them all away yeah. from the middle. You know, you want to have, you want to have some, some uh, you know, there's some humidity in the air, so you definitely want to have uh, a nice training, kind of bring them out this way, leave a little oxygen through the middle here, so this way you don't create any pockets of stagnant air. Um, and so this is just, you know, this is what's fun about growing, is yeah. kind of just looking at this and going, man, this, this looks real chunky. Let me take a couple leaves out at the bottom uh, and really start to, have air flowing through the bottom, you know, having a swoop of air come in the bottom through the top, that breathing. Again, it's all about that balance and that breathing between the soil and the plants, uh, both, both atmospheres, really. So it's, uh, and, that's, and that's the experience, you know, every round of growing, you learn something, you know, and it's, it's fun when, for our business, it's so great that we actually work with the majority of cannabis growers because they have four, four times a year or more to make mistakes and so they progress faster, where in, in conventional agriculture, you have one, one mistake a year. So it doesn't grow. At scale. You know, at often. scale, you know. So, you know, mistakes are really how you can uh, become a better grower. So uh, having four mistakes a year, you're really, you, you know, you really start to experience what the plant loves and you just become better and better. So because of that, are you constantly improving upon these products as well? You know, honestly, yeah, that's, that's what it was. You know, we, we, in the beginning, were using animal byproduct as well. And we decided, you know, we wanted to take it a step further and go towards sustainability. You know, our fertilizers have zero waste, both uh, as a fertilizer itself and the manufacturing. A lot of animal byproducts, a lot of minerals, these are being pulled from the earth and are unsustainable. You know, you're going to you're going to large mines to pull minerals. If you're looking for fulvic, you're going to the Himalayas to pull from the Himalayan mountains. Uh, if you're if you're looking for you know uh, animal byproduct, you really you can't do that on a small scale. You're really going to conventional farming to pull their waste product to develop a product that then you can put into a garden like this. So we took it a step further and an entire, uh, not only in our products, but just the, uh, the philosophy of our company, the culture of our company. And that's why you see we have post-consumer boxes for the for fertilizer, not plastic. So are um, these vegan? Essentially, you could call them vegan. Yeah. yeah, no animal byproduct, no mining, no heavy mining. There's no, there's no heavy metals in these. Um, so not only is it available to the plant via carbon, via facilitated, facilitated passive diffusion, but also, uh, you know, you don't have that breakdown, of the salt. Uh, so your soil is always going to be rich in carbon when you use these products. So, uh, you know, I think the next stage in organic gardening will be, uh, you know, things, things that are coming from fermentations and more biological sources rather than animal sources or heavy mining sources. And you guys are, certainly going in that direction yeah definitely yeah that's that's the direction we're headed we've been working on these for the past five years uh you know a, a heavy uh research and development phase uh, we slowly brought it out there but also people want that now too exactly don't they? Yeah. yeah exactly and, you know, and and are you just applying this stuff at scale on the 10 acre hemp farm yeah definitely this is all at scale in fact the the, the you can really the scale of this is actually easier than the smaller version so oh. big farms can use this and the great thing about this, because it is extracted from microbials and, 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 and attached to carbon, 
it becomes it's it's a liquid and then we dehydrate that liquid and becomes soluble so it becomes solution uh, it doesn't it doesn't have it doesn't rely, rely on ionic reactions to break down it becomes solution so you can put it through all irrigation through fertigation tip uh, you know any kind of uh, drip tape and so for scale when you go to a conventional farmer which is the goal ultimately is to is to help them reduce uh, the, the synthetic use or chemical use or high salt products is say, hey, look, you don't really have to do anything. Just add this. Because it's organic and you have to go through everything, is it more expensive to produce this a more like costly product? Um, you know, at first, three years ago it was, but now that people have really taken to it and like it, it gives us the ability to produce more in volume. Right. So then that helps us kind of reduce the cost. And then it, because we're reducing the cost, we can get it to scale, which allows us to redu reduce costs even further. It's a virtuous then, circle, yeah. a virtuous Excellent. cycle. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So costs are coming down. Costs are though. coming down great. and so and people are adopting it and we've had great, uh, great feedback from from the grower community. I mean, absolutely beautiful uh, feedback from everybody. That's great. Do you also um, did you have uh, customers uh, international? Are you guys? Yeah, definitely. You know, we uh, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, UK, uh, man, all the way down to Colombia, to Jamaica, to uh, Trinidad, Tobago. Um, yeah, all over. You know, I heard they're bringing some righteous acreage on on in Colombia and places. Yeah, like that. yeah, definitely. And yeah. so we're we're. It took a little while, but people are adopting the products down there. Governments are letting them come through once they learn what they are. And so the the process of, of, of sending things down there has become mm -hmm. much easier. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's a lot of taxes. Yeah. They essentially double the price before it hits the land. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think. Uh, Episode number one of, of Tom's Green Thumb it's is in, in the, the books. It's, just it's in the books. So and, we have and, our and, team and, from and Organic Salt. with these? Well, we're eventually going to fill them up, okay. and we got to put more plants in them. We thought we were going to have that off camera. soil, but it turns yeah. out... Yeah. Well, well we have some of the... Yeah. We do have some of the Fox Farm that we could put in some of those, and... So with that stuff, like we just took a bag of Fox Farm, you'd put which which ones did you you added the um, worm castings. So to the base mix, what what should we just put like a spoonful of into? Well, if you wanted to have a similar consistency, these are a little smaller, so you actually probably want to have a little bit more water retention given the size of the pots. But basically, just add take uh, and since you're using these types of pots, I'd probably go 10% worm castings of our worm castings in, in like a fox farm or a uh, roots or something at the store uh, that's good quality soil. Uh, and then you would do the same thing, add a little granular to the root zone, take a little worm casting, dust in the uh, dust and that in the root zone, and then I'd get some mycorrhizae that's and add that. Say. Yeah, because we'll this time we didn't have it, but you can still add it, it's not too two. late. Yeah, it'd be And a two. shovel, which we yeah, don't really need for the... For sure. Where do people go to check out more about you guys? Is it organicsalive.com? Yeah, organics alive, uh, organicsalivegarden.com. Yeah, and then also our Instagram, which is at organicsalive. Uh, and yeah, we, you know, we've, uh, we're having a good time farming. And yeah, you got to send and, us uh, some yeah. pictures from the yeah. hemp uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, we're and we're, we're documenting we're, it. We're, we're gonna yeah, smoke we're some of your hemp flower for sure. So, yeah, we're excited. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, thanks, guys. So, this yeah. has been awesome. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for having us. Yeah. Very excited. Look at this one's already growing. Look, it's already praying. <laughs> you see that? Honestly, look at that thing. It's so happy. Oh, hey, look at this one. Look at this one. It looks so you know what I mean? Like right away, they just, you know, they're just like, oh, thank you so much. You know, but you can. Seem to go into shock. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I yeah, mean, already. Well, they were. <laughs> they were. <laughs> Genetics. Yeah, good genetics. Good genetics. You know, this is that's great. It's that's a great sight to see that when they start to reach for the sun, that means the soils, re you know, the roots are reaching for soil. So yeah. it's fantastic. No, wow. it's it's, it's going to be good. Uh, a good garden, Tom. Well, All that's right. A great start. Yep. Well, this is exciting. Um, so yeah, I think Tom, we need to. I mean, we don't necessarily need to do it today, but we should get uh, basically some soil and. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll leave all the pounds behind because for this garden, you really, it's going to be such a minimal amount. So this will stay for you. And then we'll leave the pints as well. And then you could just, and what we'll do is uh, there's a, there's a feed chart. 
So this we should just throw in his garage, right? Yeah, we'll throw that in the garage with the So brewery. Tom, should we put a little more water? Is that totally no, fine? No, that's good. Yeah. So it just needs yeah. to be moist. Yeah, really okay. just kind of that quarter cup just to kind of get things so moist and activated. So just put this in the garage so it stays nice and cool. Should be inside and, or outside? You know, out here is actually not that like bad, yeah. Great. Yeah, just in the, it's yeah, nice, right nice on under the, here. Yeah. So we got, since, so those four plants, really, this is going to be all you need for the whole three months. Okay. Yeah, this, this, this little package here will get you through no problem. That's and then uh, we're going to leave you that bag. And, and then uh, maybe if we come back for another, you know, part three or four, uh, what you want to do, Tom, is you want to come back when, when they start to flower, you give them a nice top dress with this okay. and another round of castings and compost. Okay. And, and uh, this will really help, you know, reinvigorate that. That soil. If I have any questions, I'm going to get you guys. Uh, yeah. Contact yeah. And, Definitely. Uh, Tom, I will be here weekly too. And honestly, if traffic keeps up like this, we can be up here at no problem to help out, honestly. <laughs> So where are most of you got your guys orders like emanating from now? Are they like yeah. a lot of bigger farms actually? Really? Yeah, you know, we're we're we do some retail too up in Humboldt, you know, here and there scattered, but honestly we go direct to so farmer. You're in some shops yeah, up there? Yeah, okay. we're in some shops here and there, all pretty much all over the country, Michigan. Yeah, you know, so there's that's, always that's what I was wondering, because mm -hmm. there's no limitation to where you can sell your products yeah. and how so yeah. you could go into Grower, the growing stores anywhere, yeah. right? Growing stores, our e-commerce is huge. So is is that yeah. like in health? And you've been in business how long? Actually, you know, we started this business in 2002. Eric and I, we started doing stuff. It's 18 yeah, years. Yeah, a long time, you know. But 2013 is really when we started when start to ramp off. up, and you know, really started to uh, yes, turn it into a. a major so business. is your just like generally like how many employees do you guys have? Right now, at this moment, because we're working on the farm, we have 13 employees. That's, that's, that's a good number. Yeah, yeah. So is your focus taking care of your customers or gr also growing your business and brand? Yeah, going, growing the business. Growing. growing the business by brand by taking care of our customers. Yeah, yeah. You know, we actually, our, repu our reputation means a lot Everything. to us. Everything, yeah. Yeah, so we, you know. We, but is, that, is that how business is uh, grown so now? You have to, yeah. Really, it's honestly. so. Grow our is talk. Grow, it's exactly, a community. Exactly. So yeah. it's a small community. Yeah. So, yeah, our name really means a lot to us. How we treat our customers is is paramount to what we do. Our customer service, we answer calls, we hit the DMs. Well, it was Nick Tomasini who gave you guys the shout out because I was like, give me, for me, I was kind of like, I know you and Scott and whoever probably like don't use a lot of commercial products, but not everybody's you guys and knows what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> So if you were a Tom Himes wanting to do stuff in his backyard, like what do you approve of? Yeah. And, um, and so he mentioned you guys, cause I think I'd originally said to him, I was like, you know, what do you think of uh, um, uh, down to earth, right? Oh yeah, down to earth, soil amendments, you know, yeah. that's, that's more like the meals and, yeah. and uh, the animal, you know? So that's of... not really what you guys do. No. Uh, a little bit so less. So are you working in like Santa Barbara, those farms? Yeah, definitely. Santa yeah. Barbara, Salinas. Yeah. Yeah, up in Humboldt. Yeah, so uh, you do everything like you do like DAP and, and everything. 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 Right. Yeah, from oranges to apples to cannabis right. to hemp to really small to large. You know, we even went through a period uh, which people have, have adopted the, uh, the, the, the business, but we used to help uh, the pine trees repel a pine bark beetle by injecting that tea into the into the soil. So awesome. there's, a, there's so much you can do with biology. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I forgot to ask was kind of like sometimes people you know people talk about like building your soil and then letting it sit for six yeah. months yeah. because it's way too hot so this is not way too hot they've done that they've actually okay. like, let it sit well, at the so soil well, yard be, because your stuff is not the main component it's the like two percent additional stuff or yeah. five ten yeah. percent so what was the ratio of worm castings in here uh, this 10 percent is what 20 percent oh we yeah, did 20 percent 20 percent yeah it's, it's nice and thick yeah yeah you know, this will be it'll be a nice, nice 
Uh, let me look before you get close to it. That one. That's a wasp. Yeah. So don't get near that guy. Yeah. He's not going to come after you as long as you don't go after him. I thought it was on legs. No. You thought in the pictures they look. So basically, what we can do is we can put like I, I have a two, like one that's only two feet wide uh -huh. by four, yeah. and then you could put like tomato. Like what I want to build here is what a home would be, which is the tomatoes, the basil, the yeah, yeah. you know the squash, the and then just like a couple cannabis plants around, yeah. and it's like yeah. the You're wife's so happy, okay. the husband's happy. <laughs> I'm like, there's only one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, we got, we got. You can do also is, uh, you can throw like a marigold. You know, yeah. Like, like throw a marigold here, a marigold oh, here. Oh, that's a great idea. And a marigold okay. here and a marigold there. Uh -huh. And they actually have pest repelling properties to it. Well, yeah. So we can uh, call it companion planting. So nice. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's our next episode is I actually like companion that. planting. <laughs> way to lead into that. I like All right. that. Segue. So it's, we have the biology and then we get some other components that are working um, in unison with that right set of biology on the, you know, it all it all combines to each other. Beautiful. So we just get one marigold or like a I would do one in each corner and um, but just you know you get those little single ones. Yeah, or start just with a little, little the smallest one. one you can so <laughs> you're not gonna take over yeah, you these guys. You're gonna okay. want them to, to be able no, to have no. room to grow up, but then your marigold can fill in because you'll be uh, yeah, why don't you pour it in right in the middle. Pour it right in the middle. I beg your pardon? Why don't wait wait a little bit on Marigolds? These things will grow very fast. Okay. Yeah, They're yeah. going to kick the marigolds, but... <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. They're already 